look, uh, you know, it's so hard to put into words these spiritual truths. Um, a lot of it. Um, look, we're to love and respect everybody. And uh, only Christ can judge righteously. He's the only one that's going to pass that final judgment who goes to heaven and hell. So if you're telling someone they're going to hell, mm, just because they're struggling, struggling to understand the word and might not see things the way you do, uh, you're treading on a uh, um, thin ice right there, man, because if they're actually um, being shown something from the Holy Spirit and it's coming through them and you're calling them blasphemous like the Sadducees and Pharisees called, accused Jesus of doing when he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, right? So, look, um, and I don't, man, I just wish I, but he's revealing and revealing more and more truth. Look, the woman was removed from the side of her husband, right? Right? The starry side reel of heaven, right? The angelic host. And she fell first. And then her husband partook. Like, like Adam was like Christ's representative. Okay, a representation of Christ. When you take all these words back to their origin, right? And, and it's very symbolic of a, of a father and a, a husband with his wife and all this, right? Now, we're called the bride of Christ once we're born again of the Spirit. Once we're connected spiritually back to our Heavenly Father, you know, we're the bride of Christ, he, right? He's the bridegroom and we're his bride. And um, when we're full of the Holy Spirit, we become his helpmate. Like, like the woman who was removed from the side of Adam is his helpmate, right? Was made for to give him company and as a helpmate, right? As uh, his bride, his wife, as we're supposed to be the bride. And when we're full of the Holy Spirit, we, we become Christ's helpmate and spreading the truth of the word that he pours into us through his Holy Spirit. God is the good farmer that plants good seed. He's the farmer that plants the good seed, his seed within us, that Holy Spirit, which impregnated Mary, the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary. And that's how Christ, Emmanuel, came into existence, meaning with us is God, Emmanuel, with us is God, El, God, okay. And, and really, if you do, if people don't understand the difference in the entirety of the meaning Lord and, and, and the, the meaning of the word Elohim, you're going to have a really difficult time understanding, fully grasping the truth of the Bible and of God's word, I should say, because Christ is the word incarnate and he's the word that was made flesh, the likeness of simple flesh. And like the husband partook of that fruit, right? And Christ is our husband. Man. He came here in the likeness of simple flesh. He came here, but he was not sinful. Right to reveal the truth to us, to show us the way we're supposed to live and love, love and respect and serve each other, okay. Even to the point of laying down our own lives for one another, even a stranger. I mean, because we're we're our physical being is a temporary, mortal, dying, decaying, bloodthirsty, hip. I mean, look at all these, look at the definition of man. <laughs> you know, um, it's it's crazy. Um, but you need to separate the spiritual from the physical, and that's what his word does, um, if you can grasp it, if you can take it in. And we're all struggling to learn together, and kudos to the person who you know, like threw that out there at me. And, and even by that, you know, telling, you know, accusing me of blasphemy, you know, because I every time I speak, I refer to the Holy Spirit as a him, right? In, in, it's from his loving nature, like Christ is the main vine, as a woman's umbilical cord is the main vine to her child that nourishes and feeds that child in the womb, and the earth is a womb, and Christ is that main vine that nourishes and feeds his children here in this womb of the world, right? Spiritual truth, so we grow spiritually and mature spiritually. And in the flesh, it's you're nourished through that umbilical cord, so your flesh, so that body of a child will grow and mature and, and, and be birthed, right? I mean, it's just a representation of a higher spiritual picture. So, man, I'm, str I'm struggling to explain it. I, I, I get it. You know, I know what he's showing me and telling me. Like, we're to be his helpmate. One, we're full of the Holy Spirit, and we are the bride. So I can see some confusion coming from that, you know, and, and plus how uh, the Holy Spirit, the wisdom and truth is, is she is like, uh, you know, fine wine and like, 
more valuable than gold and silver, you know, all, all these things. It's like uh, if a man finds a good woman, a wife, it's a, it's a good thing. Like it's more valuable than gold, silver, rubies when a man finds a good wife, right? But, but it's just a representation of us as the bride and uh, as Christ's helpmate to give out the word, to be willing to be used by him. Because look, he said, if you're going to follow me, you got to pick up your cross and follow me. And when you take these words, man, back to their origin and understand the spiritual meaning of it, he said, you must bear the burden of knowing the truth. And just like when Christ was taken up to a high place and tempted by Satan, I'll give you all these kingdoms because we're a kingdom divided, good and evil, yin yang, same body, an eternal spiritual being that took on a dying, decaying physical form, mortal becoming a mortal man, right? And uh, like I said, little leaven leaveneth the whole lump and Satan deceived Adam and Eve, you know, through a deception. You will not surely die. You will become like the most high, knowing good and evil. Well, yeah, we, we start to know good and evil, but uh, it's the Holy Spirit that really tells you within, hey, don't do this, do that, go this way, here's the right thing to do. You know, and we reap what we sow. We, we make a bad decision, we reap the consequences. But we're to pick ourselves up, dust off, keep moving towards that goal to be conformed to the image of Christ, right? And um, it's all about love and respect, man. And he loved us so much, he came here and gave his life for us to set us free from this bondage to sin that is within our own physical forms, like Full, too full of conceit, excessive pride in our own knowledge and leaning on our own understanding, which he said, do not do that, right? So, you know, I, I'm struggling with a, a way to get it out there. You know, um, like I said, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I, I, I have no doubt I hear from him. And if you say someone's blaspheming when they're giving out us, when the Holy Spirit is speaking through them, even though my words are... I stumble at my words, but like, like Peter, he, he said, he doesn't come with eloquency of words to entice men. You know, it's, 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 it's the spiritual, it's the truth that's in those words. That's meaningful, right? You know, so, you know, I get it. And, and I, I hope to God, but see, that's not the main focus. The, the main message is the gospel. That's what pertains to your salvation, believing and trusting in him and him alone, that Christ is God incarnate and he paid the price for our sins to set us free from this snare of the devil, which is, and look at the word likeness in the Ten Commandments. It's the same, it contains the same words that are an image in Genesis 126. Hence, you need to understand the difference between El and Elohim and why the Lord, and you need to understand everything that encompasses the word Lord, the master of, the father of, the supreme spiritual leader and ruler of all spiritual beings of all creation, uh, from his supreme authority as the hus husbandman, the father, the creator, that everything exists through him, by him. You know, and Christ was the first of all creation, who is the embodiment, the alpha and omega, the first and last and only complete physical representation of God himself. And we're to be made complete when he puts his seed into us, his Holy Spirit like the good farmer, right? And we grow up as a wheat instead of a tear. Now the people who reject them are the tares, like the Sadducees and Pharisees. So, I mean, be real careful, man, because I truly am concerned about everybody's well-being and their spiritual well-being, the eternal well-being. And, uh, and that's the spirit of God within me. And look, I'm not, I make mistakes. I let my emotions get the best of me. Sometimes I get it, I get it. You know, we're, we all screw up every now and then. Someone could look at me and, in a bad moment where I've lost my discipline, right? And say, man, that dude is, you know, not good. He's not a Christian. But see, you were not to judge each other in that way because we do not know we, who will come to repentance, right? Who will come into the knowledge of the truth. So, so there's that. There's that. I'm just trying to explain it even better. But uh, like I said, watch that movie, The Shack, man. It's There's so much spiritual truth there. And uh, that person... You know, maybe they've seen it already, but, you know, the Holy Spirit in that movie is represented as a, as a female. And I get where they're, that's coming from. There's, there's like different parts of God's person, personality and he's revealing them. You know, he demands respect. He demands honor. He demands to be the only God that is worshipped. You know, he is 
the one true supreme and authority God, him. And we've made ourselves our own God. We judge things for ourselves. We wanted to have our own children, create our own children, and do what we want to do and judge things for ourselves. We thought we could pass this trial, I guess. You know, and we were removed from God. And when Christ is what brings us back together with God, reconciling us spiritually. Like like a marriage. We we left our first love. Like in a divorce, we left our home, right? Our home, because this world's not our home. We're called foreigners, exiles, aliens, sojourning in a strange land. Here, it's not our home. It's not our place of origin. And like I said, when God formed his man from the dust, the smallest particles basically is what it's how it's laid out in the lexicons, is um, of the ground, of the foundation from where they are. Now, when it was translated by men, they just figured it's the earth, right? There's there's an earthen vessel and there's a spiritual spiritual being. There's an eternal spiritual being, part of the supreme God, and there's an earthen vessel that that spiritual being went into, right? And Satan, right, these evil demonic spirits planted uh, the tares, right? They're the enemy of God. They reject God. And these, the wheat is what the Lord God planted, you know, and good seed, good seed through putting his seed of his Holy Spirit. And look, like that verse, Christ, Mary was overshadowed by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which impregnated her. So that should end that argument, or, or that should clear that up. It should make it more clear. I mean, just that verse alone. So I'm not dogging anybody. I definitely wouldn't say they're committing blasphemy just because they don't see things the way I see it. You know, but like I said, I know I'm being led by his spirit. I hear his voice. I have no doubt. And he's, I've heard, him. he's lifted that veil. I've seen spiritual things, man. And I don't just mean seeing signs and symbols and all that, or a movie or, or a broadcast where I see, you know, uh, like biblical messages going through movies and TV. I don't mean that. I mean, I've actually seeing the spiritual realm and and I can understand like if you're you see it for too long you will die from fright I mean it'll freak you out man and I wasn't on drugs or none of that and it's I see things that the people around me cannot see not all the time but occasionally and I know so I have no doubt I have no doubt and then to say I'm committing blasphemy it's like oh man you're that's you know not a good thing not a good thing be careful, be careful. I'm concerned about everybody's soul, and that's Christ's spirit that dwells within me. Okay, because he's the good farmer planted his seed of his Holy Spirit within all of us in these earthen vessels, like a farmer planting into the earth, into the ground. I don't know how I can explain it better, but I keep getting these downloads of spiritual information. It's just so hard to put into words. All right, God bless you. Love and respect everybody. That's what draws people to Christ, right? And I set a good example. Keep moving forward towards that goal to be comfortable. Because the main thing is the gospel. Putting your trust, faith in Christ and him alone. All right. Have a great day, man. Bye.